Welcome to this YouTube presentation on the topology change process within Cisco's spanning tree protocol. Today I will be giving a general overview of the STP protocol and its uses, as well as an in-depth explanation on how this protocol responds to physical changes to the spanning tree topology. Let's go ahead and get started with a brief explanation of spanning tree protocol and why we need it. So what is the spanning tree protocol? The spanning tree protocol is a link management protocol that provides path redundancy while preventing undesirable loops in the network. A loop in the network is caused by multiple active paths. These paths allow duplicate messages to exist, causing switches to see stations appear on both sides of the switch. This confuses the switch's forwarding algorithm and duplicate frames are forwarded. Without spanning tree protocol, a local area network with redundant links would cause Ethernet frames to loop for an indefinite period of time. The spanning tree protocol defines a topological tree which spans all switches in a network and forces certain unused data paths into blocked mode. Should one network segment in the topology go down or a topological cost change, spanning tree algorithm will adjust the topology by enabling blocked links. This will be explained shortly. Without the implementation of STP in redundant LANs, we are faced with three major problems. Broadcast storms occur when a frame is repeatedly forwarded on the same links and consumes a significant part of the link's capacity. MAC address table instability occurs with the continual updating of the switch's MAC address table with incorrect entries. This results in frames being sent to the wrong locations. Lastly, Multiple frame transmission is a side effect of looping frames in which multiple copies of one frame are delivered to the intended host, confusing the host. Let's observe this basic LAN switching environment which has not been configured with STP. Matthew sends out a broadcast frame through switch 1 which forwards it to Eric via switch 2. Switch 2 then forwards the frame to Ariel through switch 3. Like the other switches, switch 3 also forwards the packet back to switch 1, causing a loop. The frame will continue to loop until something is done to break it, such as a change in an interface. Additionally, MAC table instability also occurs in this environment as a result of the looping frames. Now let's observe how the packet is forwarded in the same environment, this time with the implementation of STP. The duplicate frame was blocked since the interface on switch 1 linking to switch 3 is set to a blocking state. However, if the link between switch 1 and switch 2 fails, spanning tree will realize the change in the LAN topology has taken place and adjust accordingly by setting the interface on switch 1 linking to switch 3 to a forwarding state. Now that we have a general understanding of the purpose of spanning tree, let's take a look at some of the basics involved, such as key elements in the environment, switching roles, and how these roles are assigned. Switches participating in spanning tree send messages called Bridge Protocol Data Units, or BPDUs, out of all ports to share information about their view of the local area network with other switches. The message that does the most work is known as the STP Hello BPDU. This message contains the sending switch's root bridge ID, which is the switch that the sender believes to be the root bridge. It contains a sender's bridge ID, which is the bridge ID of the switch sending the Hello BPDU. The cost to reach root, which is the STP cost between the sending switch and current root. And lastly, timer values on the root switch, which includes the hello, max age, and forward delay timers. Spanning tree protocol elects a root switch, which is the logical center of the STP topology based on the bridge IDs contained in the BPDUs. The switch with the lowest metric value for the bridge ID is the root switch. All ports on the root switch are placed into forwarding state. After this, each switch must choose a root port. This is the interface with the lowest STP cost to reach the root switch. The last step is choosing the designated port on each LAN segment. This is the switch with the lowest cost to reach the root out of all switches on that segment. All designated ports are placed into a forwarding state. 
Now that you have a general understanding of spanning tree's purpose, environment, and how it works, let's discuss spanning tree and network changes. By default, the root switch sends a hello BPDU every two seconds. The hello is then forwarded by non-root switches on all designated ports after making two changes. The cost is updated to show the switch's cost to reach the root as well as the sender's bridge ID. This process of forwarding the modified hellos to all designated ports causes all switches to receive hello BPDUs every two seconds. Let's summarize this process in a steady state operation. First, the root creates a hello BPDU with a cost of zero and sends it out of all interfaces. Second, the hello is received by all non-root switches through their root port. The switches then update the bridge ID and root cost values to their own and forward it out of all designated ports. And last, the process is repeated until a topological change occurs. If a switch stops receiving the hellos, a failure has occurred, which results in the switches initiating the process of changing the spanning tree topology. This process requires the use of three timers that are dictated by the root switch. The hello timer is the period between hellos created by the host. The max age timer is how long any given switch should wait after not hearing from hellos before trying to change the topology. The forward delay is the delay affecting the process that occurs when an interface changes from blocking to forwarding state. A port stays in a temporary listening state and later a temporary learning state based on the time in seconds declared in the forward delay timer. If a switch does in fact stop receiving hello packets within the given max age timer, it will begin to reevaluate which switch should be the root switch, which port should be its root port, and which ports should be designated ports. When spanning tree converges, a switch chooses transition interfaces from one state to another. But if the switch changes immediately from blocking to forwarding, temporary frames may loop. So how do we prevent this from happening? This can be achieved by transitioning an interface through two immediate interface states. A listening state is similar to the blocking state in that it does not forward frames. While in the listening state, old incorrect MAC table entries are timed out. If they weren't removed during this process, they would be the sole cause of temporary looping. Following the listening state, a switch transitions into the learning state. Frames are still not forwarded, but the switch is now able to learn MAC addresses of the frames received on the interface. To clarify, the switch transitions in an interface from blocking to listening, listening to learning, and learning back to its forwarding state. The transition from blocking to forwarding requires 30 seconds, but may have to wait max age seconds, resulting in a 50 second convergence delay. This concludes the explanation of Spanning Tree Protocol and its topology change process. Thank you for watching.